Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Cool Stuff with Kyle. This one is part two of my three-part series on the Lockheed Martin SR-71 Blackbird. It's my favorite aircraft, um, you know, because it was so fast and, and, you know, faster than any other production aircraft ever built. And um, so I, I had mentioned uh, at the end of the previous video, I had wondered if it was possible you know, being such a fan of this aircraft, if it was possible to own a piece of an actual SR-71. You know, there's there's only so many of them out there that were ever built, but they were all retired, and uh, and some of them crashed. I thought, well, maybe somebody's got some pieces of, of those or something, and um, turns out that, yes, uh, there are some pieces out there, um, you know, uh, that are um, sometimes available for sale, and... Um, I have a couple of pieces of um, an SR-71. I will show you what those look like. So I keep these two pieces that I have in this uh, mirrored case here that I think was actually made for footballs, but it works well for this purpose. There's this smaller piece here and this very, very big piece. You can see they're all mangled up and everything. Uh, the reason for that is that this particular aircraft it was tail number 61-7970 um, it was in an operation where it was getting refueled in mid in midair by a tanker uh, there was a, a collision with uh, part of the tanker aircraft and um, the the SR-71 you know they, they lost control of it they had to eject uh, they the two um, you know, people that were flying the SR-71, they, uh, you know, they, they did survive, but the SR-71 itself crashed into the desert in the area of Odessa, Texas. And um, that, um, when that happened, the, the military went in and recovered, you know, the, the big, important, uh, most secret parts of the aircraft, I suppose. They recovered, um, you know, the, the major chunks of it, but this, um, you know, would have impacted the ground at a very high speed and there would have been parts all over the place. And I think they just couldn't realistically get them all. So there were some left behind and, uh, and some people were able to go and find uh, some of these pieces laying in the desert, such as these. I'm going to go ahead and open up the case so we can look at these a little closer. So this piece here, I was told that this one is an internal structure piece it does have uh, some numbers that were at some point like like written on it or, or etched into it or something I, I don't know what significance those have you can see all these rivets uh, that were used to attach these these layers together and then uh, I know some of these pieces that I looked at previously they did have some numbers that were stamped into the metal. I'm not sure if you can see any of them on this piece. Now this piece is pretty cool because it does have some black paint on it and that would have been the layer that actually would have been the exterior um, part of the plane that you normally see when you look at an SR-71. Obviously it's all mangled up, um, not in its original shape you know, from the, the heat of the um, the fire after the crash and just the force of the crash itself. But you can tell that this is very light metal um, and it is much stronger than something like aluminum and is not magnetic, you know, so I obviously am not an expert, but I would say from you know just things that I've done looking at this oh and there's a, a stamp on it says number two um, but things that I can tell just looking at this you know I, I do think that this is a titanium alloy uh, which is what the SR-71 was made of I do think it's 100% legitimate I do have a letter of uh, provenance from the person that actually found these pieces and I, I believe that this is what it is supposed to be. Uh, I, I didn't pay enough for it that I think it would be worth somebody's time to, you know, go to all this trouble to make this thing look like legit, 
you know, crashed pieces of SR-71 for the price. I, I, I think it, it absolutely is. Pieces of this SR-71. I think I might have forgotten to mention that this one was nicknamed Super Skater. I'm not sure why they nicknamed it that, but that was the nickname for this particular plane. But you can see also that um, there are some pieces of like uh, like desert sand looking type material in some crevices on this. It just looks like something that uh, that has been uh, picked up after having been out in the desert for a number of years. Pretty cool. So I own pieces of an actual SR-71 and you know it would be neat to own some intact pieces you know maybe ones that aren't from a, a crash but but this is also neat in its own way because it has the historical significance of of not just being uh, from an SR-71 that was flown on a number of missions but also um, you know because this one did suffer that crash and luckily like I said nobody died in that crash or anything um, so it's just interesting that this is associated with that particular historical event. So if you watch part three, we will take a trip to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force and we will actually see a real SR-71 that they have there. Until next time, remember that the world is full of cool stuff. Go out and find some.